Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I just want to take a moment to say uh, we appreciate your time. Know that uh, you're all busy, but we do hope that this will be a uh, day for all of you. Um, wanted to introduce myself. My name is Rebecca Kuhn. I am a, um, a business analyst for Workflow Concepts. Uh, as some of you may know, this is the second session of our three session uh, series. We have four parts in each series, and this is the first of that four part series. So not to be too confusing, but I think that might have been. Um, so I uh, wanted to again, uh, just reiterate that if you miss any of these um, sessions, you are welcome to join a future session. We, we will continue. Uh, webinar series again, we'll do it one more time uh, towards the end of, um, well, be, really beginning of September, we'll do it, we'll start it over again. So in another uh, four weeks, we'll after today or three weeks after today, we'll do it again. Um, just a, a few housekeeping rules, we unmute just to be respectful of everybody else's time. There is a, a Q and A session at the end. So um, I will be moderating today, but at if you just want to chat me over your questions throughout the uh, presentation as you see them and, and get questions kind of pop into your mind, just shoot them over to me in the chat. I will ask them all at the end uh, through the Q&A so everybody can hear your question and get the same answers because they may have the same questions that you do. We are hosting Workflow Concepts. We are hosting this today with Cisco, and I wanted to just tell you a little bit about Workflow Concepts. We're a team of call center professionals with experience in designing, staffing, managing, and operating call centers for over 20 years. Um, and so we'll work, uh, we, we work with customers to help en enhance their UCCX investment and to improve the customer journey and maximize their utilization of UCCX, meaning we want to help you do the most with UCCX that you possibly can. We're a pretty unique team and, and we know what it's like to be in the trenches. So we've been there, we've lived it with you. And uh, so we've been there in the contact center world and we want to share some of our expertise with you. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Brittany Erskine, who is my colleague and uh, to be our presenter today. And oh, just one more mention. Uh, we will, we, we already do actually, we have all of these uh, sessions already recorded from the last uh, series we did. So they are recorded do have um, uh, those available for you on our YouTube channel. I will put that link up in the chat room so that you can get to it easily, copy and paste it out. But we also invite you to uh, use that or send it to your colleagues if they want to watch this as well. So with that, I will turn it over to Brittany. All right. Thank you so much, Rebecca. And um, welcome, welcome uh, to CUIC reporting. As mentioned, today we're going to be going over um, week one topic of a four week uh, series. Um, that topic is architecture. Uh, when it comes to architecture, we find that it is a very important piece of, of how we report. Um, and so when we talk about CYC and when we talk about architecture today, our goal is to help build a really strong foundational knowledge of of how your reporting provides you the data that it does. Uh, so let's start from the from the very beginning, right? What is CUIC? CUIC is Cisco Unified Intelligent Center. It is a web based application that serves each customer um, as an information portal essentially. So each of your UCCX environments has this reporting feature to it um, that would provide you uh, real-time data, historical data, dashboards for at-a-glance views, stock reports, views that are tailored to present um, relevant user-friendly data that is really geared toward context center management space. Um, so whether that is a supervisor, a team lead, um, it could be at the executive level, whoever it is that really needs to look at data and reporting, historical or live, um, is going to be able to see that in CUIC. So today's uh, today's topic really is geared toward that level of um, of resource who would be reporting um, and doing the reports, pulling the reports, reading the reports. Um, so keep that in mind as you're going through it. Um, this is this is made for that level um, and that type of resource. So 
other features that we have available in CYC is the ability to edit stock reports. Um, that is a feature that's been around in CYC over the past few versions. Um, and of course, like a lot of the things that, that Cisco has done to improve upon um, the overall system, they've also made it um, easier in some of the later versions to edit and, and play with those, those stock reports as well. So in further sessions, we do talk through this and we kind of go through the hows um, to do that as well. So stay tuned for a future series because we will talk about that in more depth. Um, what that does is it allows us to create individual views, um, allows us the ability to share those reports, schedule reports to be run um, or be, be delivered via email. And of course, we, we know, uh, most of us, right, know we have the ability to export these reports as well, um, whether that be into um, a PDF or an Excel document. Um, I would say show of hands, right, who spent many hours in those, you know, exported Excel <laughs> sheets, but of course we're on a WebEx, so I'll just have to take your word for it um, on visible hands here. So anyway, um, that's what CUIC does. It allows us to really get into the nitty gritty data there. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is, of course, what data can we report on? what defines real time versus historical and what drives the data. That's the whole purpose of today's talk is, is to figure that stuff out. So what is the data? Why is it, what type of data can we report on? Um, and when we get into the architecture slide, which is in a couple, uh, couple slides from now, you'll see it in a little bit more detail, but there's many different types of data that we can report on and the ability to do so is, is fairly extensive. Um, we have real time versus historical, views, we have inbound, we have outbound campaigns. Um, they pr provide stock omni-channel reports for us, right? That that buzzword that's been around for a while now. And um, so that would be in chat, email, um, that it would give us the ability to report on all of those. Um, for the focus of this series, right, for week one through four, we're going to focus on inbound. Um, and, and when I say inbound, I mean inbound ACD. We'll talk about that. Um, but a lot of people say, oh, I want to know outbound. Um, outbound reports, they have stock. And of course, we'll get into this in more detail as we go through it. But the outbound uh, folder, if you're if you're familiar with kind of the structure already, you've logged in several times, or maybe you've once or twice, or maybe you've never seen it. Um, but there is a, a folder in CYC called outbound, and those are specifically designed for outbound campaigns, but we will guide you um, um, through some of those reports as we get into it to kind of give you, there is the ability to report on certain outbound activities. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that in more detail as well. Um, so that's really what the data we can report on, right? Lots of different things. We have um, system level reports, which we'll explain what I mean by that. We have CSQ level reports, detail reports, summary reports, agent reports because there are so many different reasons why we look at this data um so we're gonna, we're gonna talk about all that um and then another key piece to this is understanding what the difference between real-time data and historical data is so real quick real-time data is kpi data that is available i have to say it in real time right the right now its purpose, right, and, and that's really what defines the difference is why are we looking at these two different pieces of data? And we find that a lot of times it gets confused. People look for historical data points and they want to see them in real time, which there really isn't too much of a delay in how that data reports back. But well, understanding the difference between real time and historical is is paramount, right? And the purpose of why these two different versions of, of data were designed. Um, real time, its purpose is to be able to monitor and keep a close eye on call center traffic uh, performance throughout the day, and it allows us to be as proactive, um, as proactive with your management and supervisor roles as possible. Um, and I say real time is real time; it's in the now, with a little bit of a caveat. It really depends on the on what we're looking at. Um, so one of the examples, right, real world example, is it an event driven um, data element or not? For example, is it an agent state change in Cisco Finesse, right? That's going to be something that we see immediately. 
right? As soon as my ape flips over to a ready or not ready status or takes a call, I'm going to see that, right? That is a, what's what's called or referred to as an event-driven um, item. So we have that, but we also have something um, that could be, right, real time as far as talk time, right? That's not necessarily event-driven, it's a rolling average. So one is event-driven, one is not. Um, one is immediate in our view and our perspective and finesse, and I'm throwing that word out there. Um, and then the other one, right, talk time is a rolling average. That's something in, in finesse we might see uh, update every three to five seconds, really depending on network traffic. But being that we're talking about CUIC, that's the goal for today uh, and the entire series. Um, <laughs> that refresh rate, the minimum refresh rates on real-time data is between 10 and 15 seconds. Um, and really what that does is it allows for communication between servers. Okay, so that's all about real-time. Let's talk about historical. Historical, it occurs in the past, hence history, right? Its purpose, different than real-time, is to be able to look back at an interval, right? Whether that interval is 30 minutes, hour, a day, last week, last year, right? And it allows us to be able to analyze a larger data set, okay? So that's very different than looking at a rolling average of, of talk time or to be able to see a date change immediately on a screen. So it, that in itself is the big, big difference between real time and historical. Um, this may be viewing, right, historical may be viewing calls presented to a certain queue for the week versus real time, which would be how many calls do I have in queue right now, right? It's pretty, it's pretty simple. It's pretty obvious right now versus history, historical. Um, as far as how quickly we see the historical data in CUIC, again, really depends on what type of records we're looking at. Some will write um, at the close of a call. Right, so some fields that we have and some reports will be available at the close of a call immediately. We'll be able to kind of refresh that. Uh, and a good example of that is a CCDR report, call by call um, detail report. It's a record by record detail level um, view, which um, which would give it give us information about each call at the close of that call. Right, as soon as I hang up and my agent disconnects or whatever whatever we're looking at for the disconnection point that's going to complete that record and that record's gonna be available pretty immediately after. Some will write every 10 minutes, uh, some will write 30 minutes, and that really depends again on the piece of data that we're looking at, the data elements within each report. So you'll find as you get more familiar with some reports if you're not already, some of them update quicker than others. It's not a one for all and all for one, they all report, you know, within 30 seconds of a call. It, it really depends on the report itself. So we know here there's a difference. Real time is right now. Historical is history, right? It's in the past. It's events that have occurred in the past. Um, and, and that's really the big, big difference in, in the purpose. In, and I want to drive that home, right? The purpose of why you use both of them. Because as we move forward with not just the next topic, which is what drives the data, but as we get into the architecture and how we report on some of these things, I want you all to, to ask yourself when you're looking at these reports, what is it that I need to see and why am I looking for it? Because that will drive exactly what report you need to look at as we get further into the series, um, because they're all, all of these different reports that we're gonna go through, the stock reports that we have, they each have a different purpose to them. Um, we have calls presented and calls handled for CUA, for, for SQs. You have that in many different reports, but the subsequent um, data elements that you have in addition to those within each report will help paint a picture. So just want to lay the groundwork for that. The next topic is, is it takes up a huge piece of this session today. Uh, because it's absolutely paramount to why we see reporting that we that we do. Um, and that's really what drives the data. So when we talk about driving the data, what I mean by that is, why do I see 
this report read this way, but at my last job it read this way, right? I came from Cisco and, and these are, that just makes no sense. Um, and the reason we, we want to explain what drives data is because it's very different depending on your environment. Um, which is why we spend so much time on architecture. We have a whole series doc dedicated to it because everyone is set up just a little bit different. And if you can understand your building blocks, and we'll get to that, um, and how your, um, your call center or your environment is is scripted, I'm going to use that word um, a little bit more now, uh, and how it's scripted, you'll be able to understand a little bit more about why you have, you know, an exorbitant amount of abandoned calls. Maybe it's an actual abandon, but maybe it's not, right? So, and what I mean by that is scripting, right? Scripting is what drives our data, okay? So scripting to explain it in its most simplest form is a form of, of language that Cisco uses. It's a coding language that tells a call what to do after the point a customer dials your 800 number, but before it reaches your UCCX agent, it's all of the instructions in between. For example, an IVR, right? So you have, you call in, you have a menu. We have to tell this, the, the computer what to do essentially, because that's exactly what it is, right? Our, our technology that drives the system is a computer and we have to tell the computer what to do. So we tell the computer, okay, read option one, collect option two, whatever we're doing there, we're telling it what to do step by step. So that is scripting. And everyone's scripting can be just a little bit different. And it really depends on, do you have advanced features? Or do you have expected wait time playing? Do you have place and queue playing? Do you have a prompt randomizer, dynamic messaging, these things? Do you have that in your scripting? All of that is driven by that Cisco coding language. We tell it what to do. We tell it to play this, if that, then that. And it gets really, it can get in the weeds, but to understand it at a very basic level will help us to understand why you are reporting on certain things in a different way than maybe you're used to, or maybe there's an anomaly in something. Um, we'll help kind of explain that and break it down a little bit in the next slide, but really wanted to just, it, it kind of explain what that is and why we have it. So to explain how scripting affects reporting, right? We have an example. And again, I had started this presentation off with the understanding that this presentation is really geared toward um, supervisors, managers, um, really people from the contact center. Um, but we did put in a couple examples here. If you are familiar with this, um, that's great. But really what I want to point out here with the laser pointer, if you can see it on my screen, is we want to talk through an example. There's there's a few different things that can happen in in your queue, right? And, and it's possible that you may have a backup queue, right? And let's say that you have a nested queue is what we what we typically would call it, is you have a call that comes in. That call looks to a CSQ and looks for an available resource, right? Do you have an agent that's ready for that queue? Maybe it's not. So then we look to another queue, right? We're, we're putting it in more than one, right? And then one of the examples of this, and, um, and we'll talk through different scenarios, which might be more helpful for that, that crowd that we're kind of going this to in, in a second. But one of the things we look at is an example of how a call is actually dequeued how it's marked as handled. Because if we look in our reports, we see abandoned, handled, DQ'd, handled by other. And that is one of the biggest questions we get is, is and people will say, well, Brittany, I don't understand what is handled by other versus DQ'd and what does DQ'd mean? Are like, are they not queuing properly? Is this broken? Um, so, really one of the things we go back to is, well, we need to know how you're scripted, right? We need to know what this says for your environment. Here we have a, a couple different examples. And in the first one here, what we're seeing is a call comes in, in this version, right? We're connecting the call, that's great. Then the Cisco coding language, right? The script says, you know, it's um, 
the, the call comes in and it says, okay, we are marking this call as and pointed out. Okay, call comes in, it's queued, call is on hold, delay it, right for 30 seconds. This is all stuff we tell the system to do, and it's connected. That's great. It's connected, we set it as handled, it goes to queued. So here, it can basically, we're, we're putting it through the queue loop and we're marking it as handled. Really, <laughs> it's falling through to another queue. So what's going to happen, uh, and we have the corrected version below where we have it coming in, we're setting it to be dequeued because it's going to another queue. Um, difference between these two is one we're marking as handled when really we don't know if this is going to be handled by the CSQ or not. And whereas in the below, we're, we're waiting to see, okay, is it this queue or is it this queue? Which one is handled versus which one is dequeued? You have a call go into CSQ1, and we put it also in CSQ2 to see which one is it going to get first. Okay, If you mark CSQ1 as handled when it goes to CSQ2, well, that's not accurate because when that call goes to CSQ2, it might actually be abandoned. They might abandon at that level, or they could be dequeued again. Right, so it's not necessarily considered a handled call. So you might have skewed reporting, and the ultimate right uh, result of that is you're going to have more calls presented and more calls handled than you actually have. So really, what I want to talk through, because of course we're talking through it at the supervisor manager level. Let's talk through a few scenarios. I have them written out. One is is it scenario one is what I just talked about, right? Call presents to CSQ1, it gets dequeued, and then marked as handled, right? So we're physically telling the system through our scripting to mark that call as handled. We're telling it, this is a handled call, report on it as a handled call. Then it goes to CSQ2 and it gets handled, right? So we, it's handled. In, in the reporting, what we'll see for CSQ1 is we show one presented and we show one as handled by other. We didn't mark it as dequeued, right? So, no, that's not a that's not a big problem. But want to look at CS or scenario two. Call gets presented to CSQ1, we dequeue it, and it gets marked as handled, right? And this is a very good example of what I was just talking about. Uh, it gets marked as handled. We're physically saying. Okay, this went to a different queue. This was handled. But then when it goes to CSQ2, it, it's abandoned. So it's marked as abandoned. So what we're seeing here in one of our reports, we'll see CSQ1 show a presented and handled by other. And in actuality, we know in CSQ2, it's presented and abandoned. So because it's being marked as handled, Right, and one in this report, particularly that we're talking about, it's being marked by other, which is not accurate because it's not handled; it was abandoned. Um, so this is an example of how it would skew your statistics a little bit because you might see handled that by other and say, "Oh, this is great; this is being handled by other," which means it's good. I don't need to worry about it. It's not an abandoned call, right? It's good, it, but it's showing you a a not quite accurate example. Um, scenario three and scenario four, very similar, right? We're, we're telling it a call is presented, it gets dequeued, then it queues for uh, CSQ2 and gets handled. This is a good example. This is what we want, right? So we want to know if a call is presented CSQ1, then goes to another CSQ, we want to see dequeued. We want to see it this way because we know it was not handled in the CSQ. And we don't know if it was handled by other because it could be abandoned, right? All right. So in scenario four, we see dequeued again, then gets seed, um, and gets queued for CSQ2, and then becomes abandoned. Again, this is a little bit more accurate. It paints an accurate picture. But the reason we, we stress this and we have a whole two slides dedicated to it and half the presentation is because understanding 
how things get marked and scripted and how the coding behind the scenes drives it, you can have one report reading it completely differently than it actually is. So we wanted to kind of really point that out, really stress at home. Um, we will be going over um, a, a few reports, I think, in later later episodes or series uh, sessions, so to speak, that talk about this report specifically. But for those of you in in this webinar right now that have ever looked at that report and been confused as to what is handled by other, what does DQ mean? Now you know. Handled by other means that it was not an abandoned call and it's not a handled it's something that went to somewhere else, right? Maybe it was redirected, maybe it was D, it was it went went to another queue, right? But it's not a handled call by that CSQ. And and subsequently the DQ'd does not necessarily mean something bad. It literally means it started in this queue and somehow we moved it out of that queue and it went to another queue. Um so just to explain that a little bit more. So that's really what drives the data, okay? And in the specifics about what, how to read that, those few items, but it's just one example, right, of how scripting drives what we're seeing. Um, and so being that that said, I wanna now bring it back to architecture itself um, because Right, to relate this back to architecture, it's truly knowing what reports will be the best fit based on the way that you're built. So not only how is the coding written, how is your architecture built? Okay, so everything starts at the at the UCCX level. Right, if we're looking at CCX architecture as a whole. UCCX is a communications platform, for those of you who are not familiar with that, um, with that term, is a communications platform that facilitates the ability to queue or hold calls and route them based on skills and agent availability. So if you are on this call and you are reporting on CUIC, UCCX is probably what you have. Um, e is another version of that at a larger scale, but UCCX is our communications platform that really allows everything to work and allows us to distribute calls to agents. Um, and, that, and so when I throw around that word, that's what I mean by that. Um, so let's talk about UCCX architecture in its most basic form. I am not on here to, to represent myself as a UCCX architecture expert, but as it pertains to reporting, um, I do want to explain the building blocks and the fundamentals that make up what UCCX is because it will help guide us in our journey to find what reports we actually need, depending on what you're looking to, to report on and what you need to present maybe to your organization. Um, so knowing that there are different levels, right? So if I look at A or B, right, and we'll talk through the differences there, we have different levels of reporting. Right? And I said it all starts with UCCX as a whole, and that's a system level, right? And so at the system level, this is an example of what we would look at for how many calls are coming into my entire UCCX environment. Um, so if you have different teams, you have different groups within UCCX, maybe your team specifically, you're here representing your call center but you also have colleagues that, that have their own mini call center within, a, within your organization for service, right? You, you're in sales, but you have a colleague out there who, who represents service. Those two parts make up the whole of the system. And that system level is what we're looking at when we talk about system level reporting. So that would be how many calls as a, as a whole came into your organization. A good example of that, and I have a screenshot if I don't talk too much, um, we'll get to see it. <laughs> um, so I have a screenshot of that. That traffic analysis report is really going to give you a good view of that because on the right-hand side here, I have highlighted out a few examples of reports within CUIC that we would look at to find this level of reporting. So 
being that we have UCCX as a whole, talked about the different parts. Maybe you're from customer service, you have a colleague from sales, or maybe somebody has a um, quality assurance department. Those parts make up the whole. Um, that part we would call application level. So if I'm looking at sample A here, and maybe a little bit more, um, not complex, but maybe a little bit more involved architecture versus sample B, we have multiple applications. So to explain what an application is, right, I showed you guys a script. A script lives in an application. So I have a script for customer service. That's my customer service IVR, right? I call in, I hit an application. The application then kicks off that script. It says, okay, a call is coming into my main menu, right? That's where I say, I want to go to sales. I want to go to service. Right, so I have a 1-800 number that goes to this application and a script tells my caller, press one or press two. When I press one, right, for sales, it goes to another application. Okay, it then kicks off a sales script that says, thank you for calling sales. If this is a new sales request, press one. Or if it's a, a you know, a quote, outstanding quote, press two. Right, and that's how we get to next level, right? Because you might have a sales, um, a new sales CSQ versus an existing sales CSQ. And that's really how it falls down this waterfall. Okay, so it calls into the 1-800 number, then go to the sales application or service, right? That's I've included both. So the application is directly related to a script, right? And that's how a service report can be different than a sales report because you have a different script and right, a different coding behind each of those different departments. Um, so that's an example of how within one organization you report on two different applications there and you're gonna get different results based on each of those and how they're built. So don't wanna make it overly complicated for you, but at the application level, okay, you do have an application level reporting. We talked about everything coming into UCCX as a whole. There is a level of reporting that would show you how many calls came into my 1-800 number versus maybe somebody has a direct line to sales, right? How many people came directly in there? How many people were transferred to sales versus service, right? At the application level not the CSQ. So if you're looking at how many calls went to my customer service CSQ today, this is not where you're going to find that. But if you want to know how many people went to your sales phone number, for example, this is that level at which you would look at. You would look at the application level reporting in its entirety, right? And a good example of that is the application summary. Secondary, or the, I guess, tertiary right, a level of reporting here is CSQ level reporting. I talked a little bit about how a call would, would waterfall down to a CSQ from sales, right, talking about those two different sales CSQs that you might have. Um, so I selected within the application to go to sales versus you know, sales two or, or in this case technical, okay, so I'm going to be able to see CSQ one versus CSQ two at the CSQ level. Now, one of the things that I do like to explain is that the totals, right? If you're looking at the application summary and you're looking at the total number of calls presented to one CSQ, they may or may not match. And the reason I say that is because if I have a call that comes into, and we'll relate this back to real world, if I have a call that comes into sales, right? I dial sales. And I select one for this is a new sales option, so I'm going to go to the sales CSQ. Well, it's highly possible that within this application, let's say I'm pulling up to the drive through. Okay, before I even hit one or any selection within that message, within that menu, that IVR, I say, oh, no, I don't want to be rude to the person in the window. Let me hang up and I'll call back in a few minutes. Okay, that's an example of a call presented right, to the application, it's not going to show up as a call presented to the CSQ because I didn't get to the CSQ yet. Um, 
And that's why I say, be cautious of looking at the total presented calls to an application versus your total presented calls to a CSQ. Um, likewise, it's difficult to say, and again, based on the way that your environment is set up, total number of calls presented to CSQ1 um, plus total number of calls presented to technical represents the entirety of calls presented to 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 our entire group this year or today or how, whatever you're looking at. Um, because again, you can have calls that not only maybe don't make it to queue from the application, so that's a misrepresentation, but you also, right, if you do have this set up in your environment, I cannot stress that enough, you can have a call that starts in one CSQ and goes to another. So when you're looking at total presented versus total presented, but really technical as a backup to customer service, you know, it may be the same contact that enters into the sales queue and then and then they're routed over to general as a backup, right? So that's what I'm talking about when I say it's very, very driven by your scripting and how you're set up. It's not, it's not black and white. But if we are looking at calls presented to a certain CSQ and you want to look at it at that level, a few good reports to look at are the CSQ all fields report. Um, that one is specifically designed right for um, editing and kind of paring down the view that you want and we'll get more into that in a later series. Um, contact service queue activity report that's going to you're presented and you're handled um, among a few other things but those are some really good uh, examples. Um, lastly here but very much not the least important at the agent level. Right, so how do we get to an agent? We go through a CSQ. So we have to first hit the system, we go through an application, we fall down to the CSQ, and then we're delivered to an agent. The same thing goes with, with adding up the total number of calls to, to an agent um, for a very similar reason. You can have, let's say, agent B and agent uh, A, right? Have four calls presented to agent A, um, she only handles three of them. Well, that dirty word in call center, we all know it, right? The RNA, the RONA, ring no answer. What happens to that fourth call? It rolls over to, to agent B. Let's call him George. Um, okay, George has four calls presented, four calls handled. But what's the total number of people that called in, right? If it started at A and then went to B, that's still one contact calling in, right? That's not two separate calls. That's just another call that George had. Well, let's high five George because he has got four presented, four handled, but agent A has four presented, three handled. So really, that's not eight contact calling in, right? That's essentially in this example, it's seven. So want to caution against adding the, to, the totals here. Um, and it really, again, depends on what it is that you're looking for, but there is an agent all fields report, okay, that will allow you to see all of the agent specific details. We have an entire class on CSQ based data and we have an entire class on based data. Um, those are subsequently um, sessions three and four. Um, but when it comes to that, agent call summary report is a really great example. It's one that I use very frequently to look at agent specific data. I'm looking at the performance of the individual or the team at this point versus, okay, how is my, how are my cues doing? Okay. Um, your cues, you'll get your own um, KPIs on queue data, right? What's the average talk time for this queue versus what's the average talk time for agent A, right? They're very different um, pieces of data and they're, they're used for different reasons. So, I wanted to talk through that example, um, just keeping an eye on the time. I want to make sure we have plenty of time for questions. Um, but you, UCCX architecture sample B, here, right? This is a very, very simple pared down version of what we just talked about, right? You have UCCX as a whole and you have one application, okay? One application means there is no transferring to another application, right? You have um, one script that feeds everything. You have 1-800 number you call in. You hit one to go to sales. You hit two to go to customer service. Easy enough. We call in 1-800 hits here. One goes to customer service CSQ. Two goes to sales. 
Okay, and both of those treatments, right? All of that coding fits up in one neat little package. So this is a very um, simple or a, uh, example for maybe a very small organization or maybe just a simple organization. Not saying there's anything wrong with that, um, that everything has to be a complex structure. Everyone is different. And these are just two examples of how this works. Um, so in this version here, I still want to caution, right? Obviously, we're not going to have the issue of calls going from one application to another and trying to find the entire you know, footprint view of total call volume. We have it really cut and dry. We have it very simple. If it hit this main, main menu, that is the total number of calls going to that 1-800 number. Um, you know, we don't have to take the time to try and understand how many calls are being transferred from main menu to sales because we have one, right? It, it's a very simple form of this. Um, and then, of course, we have this the CSQs kind of underneath that one application. So don't want to repeat too much on there. Just wanted to explain sample B and how you can have different architectures. So you might be sitting there and say, oh, wow, that's me. Yay. It's a lot simpler. Um, but just keep in mind that you still have the complexity at the CSQ level. Um, so I just wanted to talk through those two. Um, and I am going to, because I do have a couple minutes here, I'm going to skip over to the traffic analysis report really quickly. So as I was talking about that architecture, if you can visually still see that, 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 that model that we had there, Traffic analysis was the very first one, right? These, this is the entire number of calls coming into the entire system. And here you can see it gives it to me by day, which is great because it gives me peak calls by hour. Um, and as you're looking at this data, don't judge us too harshly. This is a lab environment. <laughs> um, so if you're sitting there saying, wow, that's really low volume, it is, but it's not, it's not broken. Uh, it's our lab system. So this is a really great report because it gives me a good understanding of what my total volume is and what, what is my busiest hour overall for the entire UCCX, right, that communications platform footprint. Um, we're also going to get by hour. Okay, the other one that we talked about at the application level is, right, applications, right, so customer service main. We have a couple different ones. Again, I caution, this is a demo lab environment that I pulled these from. We have calls presented to customer service main. Flow in, flow out, right? I had mentioned in that complex example of calls going into one application and going into another. Flow in is defined by the number of calls that are redirected to this application from another application by a workflow, okay? It does not, include calls that come from another agent or an external system. Um, what that means is this is not a manual transfer into this application. So if I'm an agent sitting there and say, oh, I need to transfer this to sales and I'm talking with the customer, this would not be flow in. Flow in is an automatic by the system. An example of this would be I hit option one to go to sales. The workflow is telling that call you need to redirect this to the sales application. Um, flow out, this is defined as the number of calls that an application sends to another application or an external destination without being handled by an agent. So same thing, right? This is an automatic transfer out, right? So an example of this is, this is customer service main, 21 people called in out of 29 and they opted to go to sales or service. 21 people by a workflow were redirected out. Um, so I wanted to talk through that because that gives a lot of confusion when people are looking at this report specifically. Um, another one, and, and we'll spend more time on this in subsequent um, sessions, is contact service queue. Activity report, again, calls presented, calls handled, um, average speed of answer. Uh, I wanna talk through average speed of answer. We'll define it in another session as well, but. Average speed of answer is not the same thing as average queue time, because average speed of answer is the average, um, it's the average wait time for calls that have been handled. Um, so it doesn't include wait time for those people that abandoned. So that's a key piece of that, and I'm kind of like highlighting over it, but I know that's on this report. I wanted to speak to that, flying through this here, so we have not time for questions. Um, 
So one of the other ones we have here is the Agent All Fields Report. This one here, a good example of what we would use to talk through all of the different data fields. I don't even think I'm capturing all of them in this screenshot. But when we go into how to edit stock reports, this is a really good base to start with because it provides you all of the fields pertaining to agents. Um, so with that, I'm going to go back to the, um, let's see, back to the question slide, and I'm going to hand it off to um, Rebecca, who is our moderator. Um, we have time here for questions, and hopefully I will do my best to answer them. Yeah, so um, I'm going to go to my little handy dandy list. We only have a couple, so please, if you've got them, if you've been holding questions, please make sure to reach out and ask them now. Uh, so from uh, Kevin, uh, he asked, can you explain why permalink dashboards require login for live data as that makes it not useful for TV dashboards? So we'll talk a little bit more about dashboards in the next session, but to answer your question really quickly, this live data requires permission, whereas historical doesn't. Um, and I understand this can, this can pose an issue when it comes to putting it up on an actual dashboard, um, like, a, like a TV monitor screen. It's, we'll get into def, uh, per, permissions and uh, roles a little bit more, like I said, in the next session. But out of the box, historical data does not require authentication, whereas live data does, um, especially in dashboards. So it's... And a, the the underlying reason is, and I think Jay usually explains this a little bit better than I can, but the data is, all of it's related to permissions. So you have different fields and different reports that require different permissions. For example, an agent would have to be given um, a certain permission level in order to view a supervisor level report. Um, when we're talking about live data and, and, and real-time data and finesse. Um, because what we've done, and we've added supervisor reports to the agent before, but they didn't work. So we had to go back and make sure that they have the appropriate permissions assigned. But with a historical, you don't necessarily have to do that because it's not tied to that same level of permission. Um, but again, we'll we'll go more into that, and in and in I think it's actually the next session. But that's a good question. Um, thank you for for. I hope I answered it as best I could. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, and so Kevin said, yeah, historical data doesn't really work for live dashboards. We totally agree. Um, but he, he did have a follow-up, and he said, is there a way to stop um, two things? Any way to request that that be changed to a, a permalink, that the live data be changed to permalink? I can answer in saying only that from what we we receive from Cisco, I mean, that's that would be a, a Cisco request, but highly unlikely, um, just because it's, it's the way Cisco has... Um, set up their their codes and to Brittany's point requires authentication for live data uh, and is there a way to stop timeout so that the dashboard never logs out and I don't know Brittany if you know the answer to that one I would think it would be based on your network potentially or your system settings is there a way to, to set UCCX to not log out yeah, I, w I will follow up for that for the next session because, like I said, we go more in dashboards in the next session. But um, I, I do believe that the answer to that is really going to be it's it's really done. And are you talking about yeah that the screen itself would probably it, it probably I would say it's dependent on your network. But I will follow up with that question for for the next session, um, being that we'll spend a lot more time on dashboards in that topic. Yeah, he. I, Kevin, we agree. Kevin said that he, if they could create a generic user to log in, uh, log in, uh, if it doesn't log out, that would be great. I mean, again, that's all, you know, sometimes your environment will allow generic users, sometimes not, but. Um, so Brittany will follow up on that. You'll hear that answer in our next uh, session. Uh, then I have a question from Dwayne. Um, would diverted calls on a report be the same as DQ'd? So I have a follow-up question to that, Dwayne. Um, what report specifically are you looking at that has diverted on it? Um, if you could share that to the group, maybe type it in or, or 
or whichever, um, they're not familiar with diverted. Um, typically, I've heard of I've heard of it being more of a call manager report, but not being something that is in uh, CUIC. Not seeing the follow up, but um, just to speak a little bit more to that. Oh, all right. So just a second. All right. So while you're typing in that follow up to kind of get that example, CUIC is predominantly, and there are a few very, very minor exceptions, predominantly responsible for reporting on calls that are coming in that are distributed automatically by the system. So this would not necessarily mean that at an executive level, I'm going to be able to go in and pull, pull a report on how many phone calls went to my, my specific ID, right, my individual personal number. So when you use a term like diverted, typically that refers to, I believe, the agent, uh, not the agent, but the phone state itself, a call that might go to one phone and then is diverted to another. Um, but I'd be very interested to see which report you're talking about. Um, and I know he said just a second. Is there any other questions that we could talk to uh, in the interim while we're waiting for for? What I will say is that, um, again, while we just kind of wait for that, because it is a good question, uh, I'd like to answer it, but um, all questions, so if you are following up after and you said, oh, wait, I have a question, but the session's over, you can always send inquiries to info at workflowconcepts.com. It is up on the screen, um, and we'll we'll be able to get back to you on that as well. And one common question we do get a lot of the times as well is, is where can you get a copy of these webinars? We have them up on our YouTube. Uh, I believe Rebecca put that in the chat to everyone. So if you wanted to go and follow along with some of the other sessions or just review this. Um, can we look at the script on slide two or three again? Uh, yes, let me go back to that. Uh, this script. Sean, did you have a explain how the corrected version fits into the corrected scenario? Corrected version fits into the corrected scenario. I can explain it to the best of my ability. Um, the what's happening is we have a select resource step. We're connecting it. And uh, I'm just looking at it here so I can answer it the best I can. We typically have a uh, scripting resource on the call. Um, DQ'd and handled versus DQ'd. Okay. So not sure if that makes sense, Brittany, but um, in 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 this scenario here, you've got it DQ'd and handled, but in the Scenario three and four, what you said were were the right ones, is just DQ'd, not handled by the first CSQ. Does that make sense? Right. You thought it porting so it as handled and then queued because you're you're gonna assume that call was handled. I have to to backtrack on your reporting. So by excluding it from being handled and just writing it to DQ, then you see this moved over to DQing and now it's going to be handled in the appropriate queue it got DQ'd to versus showing handled in two different um, locations because again that that will um, greatly skew reporting. Right. Handled in two different locations. The first connected shows DQ'd and handled and then the second connected shows D from all CSQ, well, DQ'd again and handled again. So if you look at the next slides, situations three and four show it um, DQ'd, but not handled by CSQ1, right? 
three and four. You said the three and four are the right way to do to see you, in the reports. That's what where you. That's the correct way to see it. Am I making sense? Yeah, you are. We're just reading through it. <laughs> <laughs> way to come up with a tough one. Well, you know. Well, it's. I am the techie guy. I I build the scripts. <laughs> Got so. it. <laughs> I think. I think David would probably be the best to answer your question. And, and if you are the script writer, um, because he'll be able to talk script for script with you. Whereas our purpose here is to really explain how it affects the reporting aspect of it. So when we come okay. to, when we're looking at this slide here, it's handled, but it's also being DQ'd. Whereas here, it's not it's not being queued at all right so we would not see dequeued in the report because it's we're not telling it to say dequeued they are they're both being marked as handled it's not being marked as dequeued if that makes sense i don't want to oversimplify it especially no. if you're familiar with the scripting yeah i i, I think uh i think i just had a light bulb turn on so <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, I, I hope that was helpful. To, let's get back to Dwayne's question. All right, Dwayne. Um, so he said it's contact service queue activity by CSQ report, which is under abandonment rate. Um, and, and based on that, I'm gonna have to take that one offline because I'm not familiar with ab abandonment rate. Um, I don't know what you mean by that, which is under abandonment rate. Um, but what I can do is, I'm not sure if this is maybe custom to your environment, but there's, I want to speak to that and I want to be able to answer it for you, but without having that report in front of me, I, I'm not familiar with what you're, what you mean by it. Yeah, go ahead and email Dwayne. So email that to info at workflow concepts and I'll get back to you right away. I just need to be able to see what you're talking about. Um, not familiar with that in this context, uh, it's not something that I've worked with, but I'll be able to speak to it when you send me a picture. Um, okay. All right, so thank you very much for that. And there's a question okay. on the handled step. Yep. yep. What happens if you don't have that step after the uh, set, after the connection there? So after the connection, if you don't, have handled that don't have it marked as handled correct i don't think in our scripts we actually have it marked as handled um, uh, does, it, does it mess up reporting or does it i mean the, everybody takes calls just fine but if, we, if we're missing something that we absolutely should have for reporting purposes i'm going to say yes it it's gonna if you don't mark it as handled it it would like not show up that way in reporting, but again, that's something we can um, send to our engineers and have them answer for us, for sure. I can actually answer, I can actually do that right now really quickly. Thank you, Thank you. appreciate it. Sure. All right, is there anything Anything else that we can answer for you? I want to keep an eye on the time. It's 11.59. I've uh, asked the question out and see if I can get a quick response. One other quick question about that. Um, in most of our scripts, we're not actually queuing or possibly queuing different queues pretty much one queue right um so you have this dq from all csq step uh, in in this example on the correct version i would assume you don't need that if you're only queuing to one skill in a in a script or an application i would say that's correct okay Right. In that case, it, it, as it affects the reporting in that instance, you're, if you don't have it going anywhere else, um, 
you're handled by other and your DQ would both be empty. There is another scenario where maybe you have it redirected to voicemail. In that case, it would be handled by other, but it, it's not necessarily DQ'd. And that's a whole nother thing too, but I'm not sure if you have voicemail in that queue. Um, some people do, some people don't, um, but just keep that in mind as well. Um, again, this is, we have flawed versus correct in the sense of this will be a skewed report versus this will not. It's not necessarily going to break the way that you're doing things. Um, it's just how to best report script so that you can report on it or for the case of this session for the people here it was really created for the supervisor and manager for us to say this is how your reporting is and this is an example of how report how scripting drives reporting understood, understood. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ken, can you shoot us a note on that info at workflowconcepts.com with your email address and so we can respond? I'm, uh, I think my engines are tied up doing another, uh, taking care of another customer, but uh, we could then answer back to you directly on that. On next week's session as well. Yep. All right. We are at 12.02, so I am to um need to stop sharing now and thank you all very much for your time we hope we see you next week guys